and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And have I got something exciting for you today? This is Spider Solitaire Sudoku by Trevor Tao. Now, Trevor, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Trevor Tao. Um, he's he's appeared on the channel before and also is the brother of the world's greatest living mathematician, Terry Tao. Um, incredible, incredibly clever family. Um, and this, I loved the backstory behind this puzzle on screen at the moment, um, because Trevor made this off the back of a paper he published in a journal in Australia called Parabola back in 2019, um, in which Trevor demonstrated using statistical analysis that a particular spider solitaire game that you can get online, and I will link under this video, uh, was biased in that if you won too many games against it, um, it would start to stack the deck against you. Um, how much Spider Solitaire um, Trevor was playing at that time in order to realise that this was going on, I worry about. But anyway, that was the genesis of this puzzle. And um, yeah, if you're interested in reading the mathematical paper, I will also link that. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, now, I am assured, by the way, that this puzzle is genuinely approachable. Um, I asked Mark whether he could provide me with something slightly uh, easier than the last two days, which have both taken me an hour each time. Um, and, you know, the, the fact is, I would be delighted to just do hour-long videos every day. Um, but my suspicion is that some of you out there would you know, would get bored of that. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. It might be what you want to see. You might want to see me have to sweat blood and tears every day to solve these puzzles. And I do enjoy solving the puzzles like that. Like that. So uh, let me know, I suppose. That's what I'm asking. If, if you want to see more of the sort of 20 minute videos where the puzzles are much more doable, um, then then let us know that as well. We Without the feedback, it's very hard for us to tell. We look at the sort of number of the views that, that the videos get, and it, it, really, it really is hard to discern a pattern. Um, what I can tell you is that I have a whole stack of puzzles rated impossible, all of which have passed our testers and are ready for me to have a go at. So people like Fistamafel, Emmett Saito, Mr. Menace, Sudoku Explorer, to name just a few, all five out of five difficulty, all ready and waiting for my attention. Um, maybe I'll wait until my computer is slightly better at exporting the files that result from such videos uh, before I try those. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, uh, with that said, let me read you the rules of, um, of Trevor's puzzle. What do we have to do? Well, normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, in each column, any cage of two cells or larger must contain a run of so let me read that again actually because the instructions use the word n and i've just realized that's for good reason in each column any cage of n is greater than or equal to two cells must contain a run of n consecutive digits sorted in descending order starting from the top negative constraints apply so eg an eight cannot be immediately above a seven unless both cells are in the same cage. So I think I understand this having, I had a go on the spider solitaire actually before I launched this video, just so I could remind myself how spider solitaire works. Um, and this seems very thematically apt. So I think what this is saying is in a cage, if we wor worked out this square was a, I don't know, a six, then this square would have to be a five, this would have to be a four, and that would have to be a three. So you have to um, sort of create a run of consecutive digits going downwards. Um, actually, another way of thinking about that, if you like your thermometers, you could think about this in terms of thermometers. You could imagine the bottom of these cages as thermometer bulbs, and then all of the cells on the thermometer being connected by white croppy dots. If you like that, instead of the rules that I've just given you, you can think of it that way. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, so let's get cracking. How do you get cracking on this puzzle? It quite appeals to me to think of these in terms of thermometers. I have to say, 
So if I imagine the grid is full of thermometers with bulbs at the bottom of cages. So that column has a complete sequence of cages. Uh, that square, not quite. Five's quite interesting because five sort of divides up the possibilities for this three cell cage. This is either going to have to be made up of small digits or large digits. Uh, I don't I don't particularly want to start writing in all of the options for these these cages. I hope I don't have to do that. Let me Oh no, I see. Yes, I do see. I do see how I can get that digit. I can get a 1 here by using the power of thermometers. I know there are no thermometers in the grid, but there are imaginary thermometers and that's what we need because if we imagine thermometers in all of the cages that hit the top uh, the top row of the grid, they, these would be where the bulbs would be, in these squares here. Now one thing we know about thermometers is that the only place you can place a 1 on a thermometer is in the bulb end. So what you can't ever do is put 1s in any of those squares in row 1. Because if you do, I mean the other way of thinking about it is that if we do, we've got to go sort of get into zeros and minus ones as we go consecutively downwards. So where does the one go in row one? I think only in that square. I think that's a one and it's given. Now that means, uh, it nearly means something useful. It means one's in one of two places in box three. It can't be here because that would be a zero. Uh, can we do something similar with twos? That certainly can't be a two. Ah, yes we can. Yes we can. Where does the 2 go in row 1? Well, we can't put 2 here because this will be a 1 and it will clash. We can't put 2 here. This will be a 1 and it will clash. This can't be a 2 because this will be a 1. Neither can that be. In fact, this 1 just rules out 2 from every single cage that can contain a thermometer. So that's a 2. Um, now... 3, that certainly can't be 3 because that would be 2. That can't be 3 because that would be 1. That might be able to be... Ah, uh, well, yeah, that one can be 3 and that one I think can be 3 but this one can't be because that would be a 0. So we get a little pencil mark of 3s in box 3. This this one is a bit restricted now, I think, because, yeah, yeah, okay. What can this square be? It can't be three. We've just looked at that. It can't be four or five. It can't be six, because if it's six, this square would be a four, because it would go six, five, four. So this is seven, eight, or nine, I think. That's and it's quite cool at the moment you get any sort of pencil mark in these in these boxes i've just realized something else hang on my mind's getting distracted i'm looking over at the right side of the grid thinking about something at the same time as i'm trying to talk about stuff on the left hand side of the grid this is not good for me this is not good for me. I need to keep my brain in one place. Anyway, what I was thinking was the moment I got these pencil marks here, you can you can see that we can just write in six, seven, eight there, five, six, seven there, and four, five, six there. That's forced because we know that this has got to be a consecutive sequence of digits. But at the same time, some part of my brain was looking at this, this, and this and thinking, how could that, if this is three, that will be 2, and then this cannot be 1, because if it's 1, the 2 is above the 1. And that's not, that's not going to accord with the rules of the puzzle. The negative constraint means that you can't have a 2 above a 1, because then they should be in a cage together. But if that's true, doesn't the 1... Uh, no, hang on. 
Yeah, so isn't the one always here? Or is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. It's not wrong, is it? It's quite weird to work out, at least for my small brain, but I think this is this is always one and this is always three. Because if that's not if this is not one if yes, if this is not one, this is one. And now this cannot be three, so this would be three, and it would go three, two, one, which we've just said is impossible. So this is one. One, two, three. That gets rid of those as options. And what's more, it probably gives us all sorts of things over here. Let's have a look. Can that be two, three? No, that can't be two because that would put four in row one. Can that be two? The answer is maybe. I can't see why not. It probably can be. Um, no, okay, I can't see how to do that. Uh, so we've now got ones, two, so six, sevens, eights, and nines. Ah, six can't go there. That would put a five here. It would clash. So six is in one of two places, which means five is in one of two places because both of these sixes would be in cages, which means... Oh... Ah, five is in one of two places in box one now. It can't be here because it would need a four beneath it. That would clash. I like this, actually. This is really cool. Um, that can be a four, can it? Maybe. So six, five, four going down and three here might work. Two, three. So hang on. This square can't be six and has to be a seven, eight or a nine. So we're going to get the same pattern down here. Oh, this can't be 7, because that would be a 5 and it will clash. Right, good. So this is 8 or 9, this is 7 or 8, this is 6 or 7. And, and we can fill that in immediately. Because, let's have a think about this. If this was 8, 7, 6, where would we put the 9 in the column? The answer is nowhere. The 9 has to be consecutive with 8. And all of these digits have to be consecutive with something because they're all in cages. But the 8 would be hidden up here and the 9 couldn't be consecutive to it. So the only way that works, I think, is 9, 8, 7. That's not 7 anymore. So that means that's not 8 and that's not 9. And, oh no, I was about to say that means seven's here. But no, 7 can quite easily go over there. Uh, so now these squares are from 6, 7 and 8. Interestingly, that can't be 8 now. Because if it is 8, the 6 in this box is shifted down here. And that would mean you couldn't put a 6 in row 1 of the grid. So that's not 8. So this square is 5 or 6, this square is 4 or 5. Two, three. Oh, okay, and now we ask of course where the 9 goes in box 3. You can't put 9 in a cage unless it's in the, at the very top of the cage, so you can't put it here, so the 9 goes there. That, that place is a 9 in box 1, not an 8, a 9. Um, Now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the most efficient way of doing this puzzle is, but we could. Oh, I can pencil mark that one. Three or four. Oh, don't get stuck. That would be a bit depressing. Ah, ah, ha ha ha. No, I'm not stuck quite yet. Let's look at this square and ask whether you can't put 6 in here because the 5 and the 7 are not available. So the 6 must be in one of those two squares. And in fact, this domino here 
has to be made up entirely of digits that lie between 1 and 5, therefore. So this is either 2 or 3, and this is either 3 or 4. And that means... It means something, but I don't know what it is. Oh dear. Um, okay, let's try maybe this one. What do we know about this square? We know that... We know it's got to start with a relatively high digit, actually. Because it obviously can't start with 2 or 3. We're going to hit negative numbers or 1s if we do that. It can't start with 4. It can't start with 5 or 6 either, because if it does, there will be a 4 in this run of um, 3 digits. So that's, and it can't be 9, that's 7 or 8, which, ah, that's that's it. Look, now I've got a 7, 8 pair in box 1, so that square is resolved. The moment that's resolved, the whole, the whole column is resolved. Well, not the whole column, but the whole cage. That's now an 8, that's a 7, that's a 6. The 5 here sees that one. 4, 5, 6. This square now, this is a 7, 8 pair, and we can see the order. 8, 7. Good grief. 6 goes here by the power of Sudoku. That must be 2 by the power of Sudoku. That's 3, that's 4. It's all working. That square's a 3. Good lord. Right, okay. And that's a three. Aha! Uh -huh. And those three squares now are known because they have to be three consecutive digits. And look, three, four, five, six as options are all ruled out. So if we try and put one and two into either of those squares, we're going to have a big problem. We're going to either have to use a zero or repeat a digit. So that won't work. So that must be nine, eight, seven. One, two at the bottom. One, two at the bottom. What's the order? Is it that? Nope. That won't work because that breaks the negative constraint. You've got a two on top of a one that are not in a constraint and not in a cage. So one and two go into the grid. These squares must be restricted now because they they aren't eight and nine and they aren't one, two and three. Ah, and that top digit can't be a seven either. So there's not many options there, I think. It's those. Um, five, six, yeah, that's impossible. It's, we can't have a seven here, so I can't use. I can't use six there, and I can't use six there for another reason, which is there is a six in the row. Sometimes it would help my brain out if it used the easy tricks rather than the hard tricks. Um, oh, ooh, two, three, nine. Looking down at box 4 is quite powerful. Those squares have to be 2, 3 and 9 therefore. And I can see there's definitely some restrictions. This can't be 2, it would need a 1 beneath it. And it can't be 9 because it would need an 8 beneath it. That's a 3. 2, 9 pair is resolved by the power of Sudoku. 9 and 2 go in. That doesn't seem to fix this. Those squares are 1, 5, and 8. Uh, just again, using the fact that the whole box has to contain the digits 1 to 9. Uh, that's not 8. So, these squares must be a little... They have to be high now, don't they? We can't put 1s and 4s in here, because then we're going to have to put 3s and 2s in. Um, so these are high. But I don't think we know whether they're... I think this square can still be 9 or 8. This one, 8 or 7. This one, se no, 7 or 6. Sorry, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. So 6, 7, 8, 7, 8, 9... Can we resolve which way round that goes? I'm sure many people are shouting at me now. This is a hazard. <laughs> um, hmm, I don't know. Ah, what I can do though is use the one. The one now has to be in a cage over here. 
and one can't be at the top of a thermometer so it can't go in those two squares so that's a one that's a two that's not a one anymore six by the power of sudoku is now in one of two cells if this was a six that would be a five and that might be okay actually um Oh dear, okay, so six looks like it has options actually. Four, four doesn't have options. Four has to go there. That's lovely. That gets me the six, the seven, and the eight. That's not eight anymore. That places the eight in box four. That means. That means seven is placed over here. Um. The four forces the three. In this column, I still need to place six and five. We know the six is on top of the five. These squares have to put a three into one of them. I now need nine and five, which I can do. Good grief. Five and the one are placed. The five here fixes the six and the five. These squares are one, two, and four, and I should be able to do those. One, four, two. No negative constraint being breached, so that all looks good, doesn't it? And I've nearly done this. Two is goes in here. I don't know why I just said that. That's madness. Five, nine. I think it looks like it's Sudoku to the finish, doesn't it? So this is four, eight, nine. These squares are three, five, and six. Ah, that's interesting. The five has to go at the top there. The six must go at the bottom, the three goes here. That places three over here. We need one and eight, which we can do. And those squares have got to be four, six, and seven. And the six is placed, and the four, seven is not placed. And I can't use the negative constraint, I don't think, to fix that. Okay, let's keep going. We need one, four, and nine. That's got to be a one in column four. Um, in column four again I'm sure this is resolved by something I just can't see what it is and two seven and eight there are ah, that's an eight that's a two by the power of Sudoku that's a seven a seven and the four go in good that's that's an eight Ah, ah, and I end up with a deadly pattern which better be resolved by a negative constraint. Or, and it is. Oh, that is lovely. Okay, so let's look at this. Ordinarily, we would say this. it's impossible to tell whether the nines would be this, oopsie, this way round, like that. That would be one option. Or this way round. Uh, that would be a second way of finishing the puzzle. And of course, that would mean the puzzle has two solutions. You will never find a puzzle on Cracking the Cryptic that has two solutions unless we have made a very bad error. Now, what resolves it? This eight does. If the nine is here, these should be in a cage because they would be consecutive. And we know therefore that the nine needs to be kept away from the eight. And that I think is the finished puzzle. There you go. Absolutely gorgeous. I really enjoyed that. Um, I hope you guys did too. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you want to see on the channel in terms of the length of videos and the difficulty of the puzzles. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. 